This is the Pixinsight script tutorial for Image Solver. You find Image Solver in Script, Image Analysis, Image Solver. And here it is. So if I would have asked two weeks ago if anybody knows the script Image Solver, probably the most common answer I would have gotten was, huh? But now, two weeks later, everything has changed. This is now a must-have script. Everybody will use it practically on a daily basis. So it's an old script finally come to fame. So just to elaborate on that, why it is so crucial. As you all know, PixInsight has removed the plate solving from the photometric color calibration and from the new spectrophotometric color calibration. So when you're importing a picture into PixInsight, which was stacked with anything else than the weighted batch preprocessing script, you absolutely have to plate solve the picture before you can do the color calibration. Now, when you use the weighted batch preprocessing script, then this script can actually do the plate solving for you automatically within the script, but there are some issues with it. Issue number one, from time to time, Plate solving fails. When it will fail during the execution of the script, you will have to redo it afterwards. Issue number two. If you crop the picture after the stacking, the plate solving is gone again. And this is usually the first thing we do, the dynamic crop. Now, PixInsight also has put this in the WBPP script, an automatic crop function. But the question is, do you really, really want to leave it up to the script to crop your pictures? I, for my, myself, definitely not. So based on all on that, no matter if you stack within PixInsight or outside of PixInsight, you need to know this script. And even it might look quite innocent, if we have it like that, as soon as we start to open all the stuff that is below, actually it has not even space on my screen. It's so big. So let's just have a look at it in detail and also have an honest discussion what is better than before and what is worse than before. And to be quite honest, the only thing that is really worse than before is that you don't have it integrated anymore in the color calibration process. So you have to open another script, a process, whatever, before you do the color calibration. That is a hassle and it is quite hard to understand why it was done like that. But on the upside, this script is a lot more powerful than what actually was for plate solving purposes within the PPC, respectively now SPCC process. And we should also not underestimate that. So let's start from the top and go to the bottom. By the target image, you can actually decide if you want to use the active window, and I would recommend that, or you can choose one or more files from a list to work with. In the next part, image parameters, you tell the plate solving script where your picture is located. And here it gets really interesting because usually what you're doing or what you're used to is you go to search, you tell them what it is, or let's say M20, search, it finds it. Okay, I know it's not that, but just to, to explain. And it, it enters the coordinate, and now you enter the date and the time. But sometimes this is an issue. And it's an issue when you don't dead center, make a photo of something like here, the Triffid Nebula. But you're doing something like I did here, which is part of the Veil Nebula, but it's actually Fleming's Triangular Wisp. And as it goes, it's not even completely centered. So I had huge issues plate solving this within PixInsight. Because whatever I entered, it was not really that. It was not really the center. And I think if you have seen other tutorials from me, you saw me fighting with that, getting this plate solved. And now, we have an absolute ingenious way how we can do that 
And I do not want to take credit for that. I want to really give the credit to the person who actually posted this today, and that's Jonathan Hayton. And I can simply congratulate him for this absolute ingenious idea. So the issue is then you, that when you, for example, stack in AstroPixel processor, the result picture loses all the information in the FITS file. And that is also why you cannot simply extract it from here, but you have to enter manually and then the issues start. But what Jonathan realized is that in the original pictures out of which you stacked your result, all this information is in here. So what can you do? You go in process, image and fits header. Now here in no view selected, we're choosing now this picture, this initial picture. And you see in here, if we go down, we have all these coordinates in here. And now all I have to do is I take the triangle and throw it on the stacked picture. And it transfers everything in this picture. So now if I open the script again, it automatically has transferred all this data in here, down to the date, down to everything, even the focal distance of my telescope. Everything's in here and I'm fine. And I tried that already before, and now it actually goes through like butter. So again, a huge shout out to Jonathan Hayden who found this idea and I just love it. So now let's go down another step, model parameters. Here you can either choose the automatic catalog or you can actually go to the local XPSD server, which means you have downloaded the catalog to your PC. And now this is important and it creates a lot of confusion. Yes, it is Gaia DR3, but it's not DR3 SP, which means the catalog which you have downloaded for doing now the SPCC color calibration does not work here. So you have separately also to download the DR3 catalog and only then this will work. It's absolutely crucial. But as a good part, you do not have to download here the full catalog. The first or two or three files are good enough. Also, just a look at this here, limit magnitude. Usually it's at 12, that's automatic. I can deselect that and now I can limit the magnitude. Where would you do that? If you have a very wide field with a lot and lot and lot of stars, this might just overburden the system then to say, I limit it to the brightest one makes a lot of sense. Now, in most cases, this is good enough and you can now press OK and it does plate solve it. But as you know, sometimes if there's a lot of noise, a lot of distortion, a lot of whatever, <laughs> it will simply not work. And these huge sections down here, they're really for that. And so the things that make a picture which does not go through at the end go through is first and foremost the alignment algorithm. Usually, and as a default, it's in triangle similarity. That's fast, but it's not as good as polygons. So if with the triangle similarity, the script creates problems, just go on polygons and there's a big chance that it will work. Other things that might help, minimum structure size. If you have very tiny things which confuse the system, you can actually increase that. Hot pixel removal, you shouldn't have some if you have calibrated the system, but you could also increase that. Noise reduction, you can move that up if you have a very noisy picture. And then you can also play with these here. And then the lowest part here, distortion correction. If your picture is out of whatever reason heavily distorted, to activate that and to try with this functionality to mitigate that can help. Also, here if you activate these maps, you can also see how much distorted and where your picture is distorted. And that may help, might help you to actually correct that in your equipment. Now, if you have gone through all that, we can press OK. OK. And here we have our picture now plate solved, all is fine. And that's probably a routine we will from now on to do very, very much. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give me a like and hit the subscribe button. 
See you next time and clear skies.